From Hollywood, the CBS Radio Workshop. This is a war story. Not Korea, but the other war, World War II. It's about a new kid from the Repel Depot and a sergeant that's had it. Yeah, I know, but it ain't the same story you've seen in the movies and TV. It's about a harmonica, too. CBS Radio presents the CBS Radio Workshop, dedicated to man's imagination, the theater of the mind. One of the prime objectives of the workshop since its first broadcast more than 20 years ago has been the discovery and encouragement of promising young talent, actors, composers, writers. We offer such a talent now. Arthur Zagouris, director of the Little Theater of Winnipeg, Canada, whose first radio script was presented over the transmitters of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation three days ago, whose second you are about to hear. Like Stephen Crane, who was too young to serve in the Civil War, Mr. Zagouris was too young to serve in World War II. Yet as Crane's red badge of courage caught the spirit and the action of the war between the states, so we feel Mr. Zagouris has caught the interpersonal tensions of the war between the ideologies in... William and Robeson's production of Harmonica Solo. I was in the infantry, Charlie Company, 26th Regiment, 1st Division. They called our outfit the Bloody Red One because our shoulder patch was a red numeral one on a shield of green and, well, because the first bought it in North Africa, had it in Normandy and gave it away all across France and into Germany. It was a tough outfit, the bloody red one. Since this is a war story, it might sound more romantic to say that we were marching through mud, but you don't march in combat, you walk. And it wasn't muddy on this road in Germany. It was dry and dusty. And the men walking in the evening, walking to nowhere, to the squeak of that harmonica. All right, men, take ten. That was Sergeant Stone. We call him Stoney, a good enough guy, but tough. This story concerns him and the kid who played the harmonica. My name's Banyan. I was a corporal then. Oh, I almost forgot the kid's name. We called him Pagliacci, but his real name was Dino, Dino Futillo. Okay, Pagliacci, knock off the music. Huh? Knock it off. Why? Just knock it off. You've been playing that thing for the past five miles. It's getting on my nerves. Man, is it ever loving? Huh? You know it. Yeah. Dino? Yeah? Got a butt? No. I mean, just because Stoney won't let you play, that's no reason to take it out on me. Ah, uh, Stoney's a creep. He's been needling me about my harmonic ever since we left the rear. Five minutes after I joined the outfit, he started on me. What's eating him? He's tired. Well, who ain't? Hey, look at him gazing down the road like some general. Yo, Mike. Yeah? Got a butt? Here, take one of mine. Thought you didn't have any. I just found a couple. Thanks. Never mind, Mike. Hey, well, what's wrong with my plan, Banyan? Nothing. Then, then why are you Stoney needling me? Oh, no. Man, nothing beats a good cigarette. Banyan. Jeez, a guy can't take a break. Okay, Stoney. Hey, but Banyan, put, put in a good word for me, huh? Playing's the only thing that keeps me moving. I'll try it, but it won't do any good. Well, you can talk to him. Banyan, on the double. Okay, Sarge, okay. What's up? What was the musician bending your ear about? That why you got me off my butt? No. Look... You see that rise? Which one? I'm I'm pointing right at it. The one past the bend in the road. Yeah. It's the rise of those funny shaped trees. I know which one you mean. What about it? Well, get a couple of guys and take a look. See, I'm worried about it. I don't know what's behind it. Get a couple of good guys. How about Mike and that new kid, Dino? The harmonica player. Yeah. Okay, but make sure he don't start sucking on that mouth organ. What's wrong with this plane, Stoney? Don't give me a hard time. It's not too bad. 
Cheers us up, too. I'm sick of his ever-loving plan. It doesn't do any harm. You never know. Now, this road is too quiet. Somebody might hear it. There's nothing doing up ahead. Let's make sure. No more playing. You got it? <sighs> sure, Stoney, but the kid's teed off. I don't care. It was okay back in the rear. It didn't matter. I like to make the new men relax. It helps them get over the jitters. I didn't mind then, but, but now it's different. He likes the place, Stoney. Look, tell him to see the chaplain. What's the matter with you, Stoney? You never used to get scared. Cut it. You're beginning to act like... Cut the... it, I said. Cut it. Just get Mike and Pagliacci on that rise and on the double. Okay, Sarge. And, uh, Banyan. Yeah? I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to blow my top. Forget it. Mike. Dino. Come with me. Okay. We're going to check that rise over there. Which one? <laughs> I had the same trouble. That one, see? Oh, yeah? What about it? We're going up to take a look, see? Yeah, did, did, did you talk to him? Yeah. Come on. Mike, you better leave that BAR with Bukowski. Take his M1. It's lighter. Hey, my BAR? I ain't used to the M1. My rifle's too light. Take Bukowski's M1. I don't want you weighed down. What's Tony say? Hey, better not mess up my BAR with his... What'd he L1. say? We better get moving. It's getting dark fast. Take a leg, Mike. Okay. What, what, what happened? Can I play? What's keeping you, Mike? I have to scrounge up a couple of bandoliers. Let's shove off. I can't play anymore. Look at this M1. It's cruddy. Come on, Banyan. What'd he say? Oh. Stoney, he's been on my back ever since we left the rear. Yeah? What's wrong? He don't like my harmonica. What'd he say, Banyan? He said that you're not to play it anymore. It ain't doing no harm. He doesn't like it. I don't blame him. It stinks. I, I, I admit I, I don't play too good, but it helps the day go by. It's not that bad, but Stoney's right. It isn't a good idea to play it up here. Well, there's nobody around. Oh, no? No. Why do you think we're checking that rise? Agliachi, you got lots to learn. Nah. Wait till you've been in it for a while, like the Sarge. Stoney's been in it since Africa. And that's a long, long time. So, he's an old-time R.A. bum. What's that got to do with it? Sure, he's regular army, but figure it out. Most guys have been with him, the old R.A. boys. Most of them have had it. They're gone. All gone. Nobody's left. Just Stoney. And he's sweating it out. So he's an old-timer. What's that got to do with my plane? He's sweating it out. He's tired, you know. We're tired, too, but it's in a physical way. Stoney's tired in another way. How long have you been in combat, Dino? Never mind that, Mike. It's okay, Brennan. I was with the 78th before I got transferred here. How long with the front-line outfit? Well, about a month. Not even enough time to get the CIB. Got it, Mike. He's got all right knocking Stoney. You see, it's this way, Dino. I've been with the first since D-Day. That's nearly a year. But Stoney still considers me a new recruit. When you've gone through combat like he has for nearly three years, you start to worry. You've seen all your buddies get it, and you start to thinking about your numbers coming up. The next one is for you. And you don't want any part of it. You just want to come out of this thing in one piece. That's what's happening to Stoney. He's way overdue. Like I say, he's sweating it out. And he doesn't want to stretch his luck. He wants to make sure that you don't break it for him. My music ain't gonna kill him. Who knows? Okay, hold it. Mike, go up to the left of those rocks and come in slow and low. You don't have to tell me how. Dino, go around to the right by that big tree. I'll come through those low bushes. Now, keep down. We don't know what's over that rise. Okay, take off. I waited for a moment until Mike and Dino were on their way, and then I started for the bushes. Suddenly, a German stepped out from behind one of them. I caught a glimpse of the burp gun in his hand and dove for the ground. He took two quick bursts at me. I rolled down the rise and out of his sight. I saw Mike down behind the rock, and I looked over at Dino. He was standing about 15 feet away from the German. It was like a slow-motion picture. Dino slowly raised his M1, took careful aim, and squeezed one off. The German looked at Dino as if he was surprised to see him, and then he fell to the ground. Dino walked over to him and emptied his clip. Nice going, kid. Down. Both of you down. You know better than that, Mike. They heard the shots. His size, he was standing. I'm covered with his blood. Crawl away, stupid. I, I, I can't. He's in my way. Uh, wait a second. Oh, man, he's a fat one. I can't figure out why he didn't get all of us. He stood there looking at the kidney. 
Never tried to move. I can't, I can't figure it. Mike, go back up to those bushes and take a look. See, there might be some more of them. I got it. You got it. He was so close. I, I couldn't miss. Take it easy, Dino. He, he was right on top of me. He, he could have gotten me so easily. Ben, I, I could see the expression on his face. Funny, like, as if he thought that I would miss. How could he have missed? How? He was nervous, I guess. Forget it. Thank you. Yeah, Mike. I can't see anything, boss. Not a thing. Look. Anything look, moving? Look. look. Uh, don't look like it. Come on back. I just said. What's up? He's oh. looking at me. He... It's just the way his head is turned. One of those trick things. It's not. He was looking at me in the same way before I killed him. Knock it off. You've seen dead men before. I've never killed a man before. Forget it. You've got to. You'll go nuts. Forget it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mike. Nothing yet. Sure? That looks funny. Look, we better dust out of here. I, I don't like the looks of it. Did you see anything? Well, nothing definite, but, well, I, I I got a feeling. But you didn't see anything? Nothing. We better go. Yeah. Let's go, Dino. You go ahead. I'll catch up with you. I uh, didn't see anybody in those woods, but... Still. What's the kid doing? Well, nothing. He's just looking at that guy. On the double, Dino. Yeah, look at that crazy kid. He ain't coming on the double. He's just strolling along. Yeah. First one's always the roughest. Yeah. Kraut was probably a straggler. Yeah. Can't figure out why he didn't open up on us sooner. He had us dead to rights after we turned the bend. Yeah, it's hard to figure. Look, what's the matter with that kid? Hey, Dino! Forget it, Mike. Well, if there's anybody around, they'll hear it. If there's anybody around, they would have heard the shots. They'd know by now that we're here. Does he have to play now? Mike, why didn't you open up on that guy right away? Uh, I don't know. Why didn't you? For the same reason that you didn't, Mike. It was the first time that I'd ever seen a man I was about to kill. It threw me for a second. I've never killed a man that was standing so close to me. Have you? No. You know, it doesn't happen that way very often. It's never happened to me before. Either I'm firing into a house, a clump of woods, or something, shooting at something I can't see. I never know if I've actually killed anybody or not. I've always felt that I've never really killed a man, but that the killing was always done by the other guy. They always put one blank into the rifles of a firing squad, and the whole squad thinks he was the one that fired the blank. That's the way it is with me. I feel I'm firing the blanks. But when you know that you have to kill a man, shoot him dead, you don't feel like a soldier. You feel like a murderer. That's why we held off our fire, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, the, you're the smart one, Ben. And, uh, <laughs> you always figure things. Uh, the kid hasn't been in combat very long, but he'd be all right. Sure. It sounds kind of nice out here in all this quiet. I like it. But Stoney don't. He don't look too happy. Uh-oh. Dino, you better hold it up. Hey. Hey, what happened? What was all the shooting about? We caught us a crowd. You... Hey, knock it off, Dino. I said knock it off. You want to get us all killed? What's the matter with you? You're deaf? <laughs> You're nuts or something? Oh, come on. Get up. I didn't hit you that hard. Get up. Take it easy, Stoney. Stop making like old blood and guts. Dino killed the crowd. All right, so he killed him. Does that mean he's got to blubber like a baby and blow that harmonica like Susan's band? Dino killed him close up. The German wasn't more than 15 feet away from him. All right, get up, Dino. It isn't the end of the world. Banyan, did you see anybody in the rise? Only the guy that Dino got. Nobody else. I think he was a straggler. Did you look good? Mike did. What do you mean, Mike did? I sent you up. I was taking care of the kid. You know Mike can't see so good. I can see as well as anybody. Shut up! Now, look, Banyan, 
I sent you up there to take a look around. You, not Mike. What's wrong with me? What did you see? Nothing. Great. Great. Nothing. Not a thing. These woods are probably crawling with krauts. And I sent up a nurse made in a blind dope that... I didn't see a thing, I tell you. Are you sure? What? Well, I... You're not sure. I... I'll just get that... through dark. I told you, Banyan. We can fold up here tonight if you don't want to go past those woods. What do you mean? If you don't want to go past those woods, Stoney, this is a good place to hold up. No, no, we'll go on. Okay, men, on your feet. Banyan, you'll take the point with me. Might get your B.A.R. Do you know you take up the rear? Huh? I said take up the rear, you and Burkowski. Why me? Stoney. Just take it, Dino, and don't ask questions. We'll split up, half on each side of the road, and stay in the ditch. Keep low and no gabbing. Don't light any butts. It's too dark. You got that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't fire at anything until you're sure. Well, let's go. <laughs> We didn't make very fast time in the ditch. It was full of rocks and brush. As we passed the bend and the rise, I looked up. And in the light of the rising moon, I could barely see the outline of the dead German against the sky. I looked back and saw Dino stop a moment and then move on. I couldn't see the expression on his face. It was too dark. Finally, we came alongside the woods. Stoney signaled us to slow up. After a few yards, he signaled us to stop. He stared into the woods for a few minutes and then crawled over to me. You see anything, Banyan? No. Yeah. Looks funny. Awfully funny. You sure? I don't see a thing. I don't know. We better move on. This isn't a good spot to stop. Look! Damn you, look! Don't be giving me any orders. I told you, Stoney, I don't think there's anybody in these woods. You're as bad as Mike. Why did you send him to look? Why? He's a good man. He's a jerk, and that harmonica player, two jerks. Can I depend upon anybody around here? You, Banyan. I thought you had some time in. And you goof off like this. I gotta pull it alone. Shall we move on? I gotta pull it alone, the whole, whole squad. Let's go. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, men, move out. Down! Down! Uh, where are they? Where? I don't see anybody. Didn't you hear that stick crack? Where are they? Look, Stoney, in this moonlight, nobody could come across that clearing without being seen. There's nobody in these woods, Stoney. If they were, they'd let us know in a long time ago. Where are they? It might have been an animal. Huh? An animal? No. No, no, no. It's them. Maybe we should go back to the bed. No. No, no, no. Don't move. Stay here. Here. Okay. Where? Where? Where are they? <laughs> I don't know how long we were there. It's hard to tell about time. Sometimes when I think about it, it seems as if we were there for hours. And other times it seems like minutes. I wanted to look at my watch, but every time I moved, Stoney would grab my hand. He crouched there, peering out into those woods. It was quiet in the moonlight. Too quiet. Every time somebody would move or the wind would blow, Stoney would jump. And even when he realized it wasn't the enemy, he'd take a long time to settle down. And then I couldn't believe my ears. Dino started playing his harmonica. What's that? It's Dino. He's nuts. Where is he? Where? Back there. See him? He's walking away. He's walking back down the road, blowing that harmonic. I bet he's going back to the crowd he killed. I'll go get him. No, 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 I'll get him from here. What do you mean? He ain't going to kill me. Stoney, put down that gun, you're crazier Let than me he is. Let me be, Van, you know you'll get it. I'm not going to let you kill him. 
I told you, Banyan, he ain't gonna kill me. I told you, Dino, I told you not to play. I told you, but you didn't listen. Come on, get up, Dino. I said get up. Pagliacci, get up. Come on, King, come on. I I told you not to play. You shouldn't have played. Now get up, King. Come on. Stone. Stone. I liked your playing, Dino. Honestly. I didn't mean it. Get up, huh? Get up. He's dead, Stoney. You get your hands off me. He ain't dead. I told him not to play. Didn't I, Mike? Yeah. Didn't I, Burkowski, Jim, Banyan? I told him. You heard me. Why did you have to start playing, kid? Why? Why did you have to start playing? That's about all. Stoney fell down on his knees beside the kid and started to cry. I guess he was crying out all the fears in him because after a while, after a long while, he stood up and he sounded as if he was all right. We walked on the road past the woods. There was no one there. Stoney never talked about Dino after that. Neither did we. I guess we should have told our CO, but nobody wanted to do that because we all knew what Stoney had gone through. We got Dino and buried him next to the German. His folks were informed that he was killed in action. A month later, Stoney stepped on a landmine and blew his right foot off. He went home. And that's about the whole story. Except whenever I remember the war... I always hear Dino's harmonica. Hollywood, the CBS Radio Workshop has presented Harmonica Solo, an original play for radio written by Arthur Zagoras, director of the Little Theater of Winnipeg, Canada. The part of Banyan was played by Joe DeSantis, Sergeant Stone by John Daner, Dino by Shep Menken, and Mike by Lou Krugman. The original music was composed and played by Leo Diamond. Next week from New York, the workshop will present A Dog's Life, the story of a dog who manages to live in a world in which there are people. With tape recordings, A Dog's Life documents the experience of raising a dog from the time man's best friend comes to his permanent home until he learns the happy fact that a dog's best friend is man. For a pup's eye view of life, don't miss A Dog's Life at the same time next week on CBS Radio Workshop.